Hey! Hero? These sevens and eights you're dealing out are cool and all, but have you ever just tried to hit... harder? Wow. There you go. Do that more. Critical hits have been a staple of game design for almost 50 years, deeply rooted in RPGs, but now right at home in first-person shooters, action, and strategy games. Fighting games... it's happened before. Couple times. Mixed results. But it's easy to sell critical hits short if you think they're just about big, flashy damage numbers. Critical hits are a powerful tool to add a dash of unpredictability to a game. And with some creativity, you can really unlock its true potential. Let's start with the basics. But first, today's episode is sponsored by Skillshare. I just took a class called Inclusive UX, Designing Websites for Everyone, by Regine Gilbert. It's a real short and sweet intro to designing with inclusivity and how to spot and avoid accessibility problems you might have never thought about. Starting a project from the beginning with accessibility in mind helps make the process much easier and helps keep your potential audience as wide as possible. It's a great class, and it gets right to the point with a bunch of actionable tips for your projects. You can get access to this and thousands of other classes for creators over at Skillshare. They have classes on UI and UX design, photography, creative writing, music and music production, productivity, animation, and much more. Whatever you're making, Skillshare can help you make it better. They keep launching new premium classes all the time, ad-free, for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thanks, Skillshare. Critical hits are old. They come from Empire of the Petal Throne, a tabletop role-playing game written in the mid-70s, similar to Dungeons & Dragons, but with sort of a sci-fi Mesoamerica vibe. The game had the concept of a lucky hit. If your character attacks someone, you rolled a 20-sided die to see if you hit. If you rolled a 20, your character did twice the normal amount of damage and got another roll. Get a 20 again, and you dealt a killing blow. The game's designer, M.A.R. Barker, wanted the lucky hit to simulate hitting a vital organ in combat. Just that random chance that your character does way more damage than usual to your opponent. The idea spread to other tabletop RPGs as the critical hit, and eventually to video game RPGs. Lots of games that implement critical hits don't stray too far from this original pattern, where a critical hit is a random chance that you'll do more damage on an attack. In the original Dragon Quest, on every attack you have a set 1 in 64 chance of dealing a critical hit. If it happens, you'll do more damage. And that's it. It doesn't seem like it's that important strategically. But there's two things going on here. First, Dragon Quest was the first video game to implement a critical hit system at all, so it still was groundbreaking on its own. The creativity came later. Second, there are strategic implications even in this most vanilla critical hit system. So, what is the point of a critical hit anyway? Well, what happens if we just take them away? The most fundamental form of RPG combat is just a race to see which side gets to 0 HP first. If you just leave it there, it gets pretty predictable which side is going to win well before it happens. And predictability is boring. You've got to embellish it a little. Status effects are one way to do it, and we've talked about them in another video. They add in some complexity to disguise the race to zero by throwing in more to consider and plan around. Critical hits are the chaotic cousin of status effects. They add complexity too, but critical hits add it through surprise and random chance. They can throw a wrench in your plans at a moment's notice, but what kind of wrench and how big it is can vary game to game, system to system. And that's where the creativity comes in. The simplest critical hit systems are made up of two parts, the random chance and the greater attack power, a trigger, and a bonus. But even with only two parts, there's still a lot of leeway here. The bonuses we've talked about so far have been extra damage, but why does it have to be extra damage? Why this much damage? Why tie it to damage at all? It could be all kinds of effects. What about the trigger? They've been tied to a random roll of the dice so far, but how much of a random chance do you have? Or why does it have to be a random chance? All of a sudden, a simple system can hold complexities. Let's start with the most basic tweak of all. How do you decide how often a critical hit will trigger? Sometimes, you can leave it up to the player. There are lots of games where one viable strategy is to crank up the amount of critical hits that you can do. Instead of building a character to hit harder in a conventional way, 
Start making your own luck. Create a build where instead of a rare chance of hitting very hard, it's rare that you don't get a critical hit. In Hades, you build your character each run with a new set of boons granted to you by the gods. Each provides important benefits on their own, and will often synergize especially well with other boons. Each boon is granted by a specific god, and those granted by Artemis often increase your chance of landing a critical hit. If you focus on getting critical boons from her, and balance it out smartly with a couple of other boons, your character can become a DPS monster. I recently made a crit focus run while using the fast attacking gauntlets. Deadly Strike and Deadly Flourish increase the base damage and crit chance of my normal and special attack. Pressure Points added crit chance across the board, and the Hunter's Mark Stas effect added a whopping 65% chance to critically hit nearby enemies every time I crit anyone. By the end of it, some of my attacks had an over 90% chance to trigger a critical hit. Seeing the flourishes the game puts in fire over and over and melting through enemies room after room made that run incredibly satisfying to play through. Careful though, even though they're the most common type out there, critical hit systems based on chance don't fit every game style. The luck factor can cut hard against the grain in some genres. Competitive fighting games are a great example. Any move that has a dice roll attached can become very contentious within its game's community. There's a clear distinction in how it feels to be on the bad end of luck derived from a player's decision, like predicting what your opponent will do, and luck derived from the computer's random number generator. Smash Bros. Ultimate ran into this with the moveset for the Dragon Quest hero. In a nod to the series' critical hit systems, they included several luck-based moves that can single-handedly turn a match around. Landing a smash attack can sometimes result in a crit, which boosts knockback and can KO a character at much lower percentages than usual. The hero also has a down special with a random set of skills to choose from, including an instant kill whose success rate increases with how much damage the target has. Even before Ultimate, Mr. Game & Watch had a random number generator move with his side special, and it too was a likely one-hit kill if the computer rolled a 9. It's tough to prepare for a random instant KO like that, and it's a system with very, very high stakes where one dice roll in your opponent's favor can instantly decide the match. In a style of game that draws a lot of appeal from reading your opponent's mind, it cuts directly against why many people come to fighting games in the first place if you lose because of truly random chance. So if random crits don't fit everywhere in every game, what other types of critical hit triggers can we use? You can get a totally different feel for a critical hit system if the trigger is less random and more predictable. Instead of a random dice roll on each attack, what if you get a critical doled out on a schedule? It doesn't show up in all that many games, but League of Legends has a character whose skills apply crits periodically. Caitlyn has a passive headshot skill that fires a projectile which deals bonus damage every few auto attacks. Periodic criticals are an interesting way to strategize around a crit system, but having to time it out exactly can be a little awkward and prone to misclicks. It might be worthwhile to try it out in a game that incorporates rhythm elements. Crypt of the Necrodancer does not, but I think it fit. That game goes way too quickly to be able to react to random critical damage appropriately, but if you knew every 8th beat was a critical hit, that might be something you could use to your advantage. Shooters have adapted the critical hit, but instead of triggering it randomly, it happens when you hit a smaller target. Headshots. Goldeneye and Team Fortress 1 both did it at about the same time. Thematically, they're just like the lucky hits in the original Empire of the Petal Throne, a bonus reward to simulate doing damage in a critical organ. But instead of randomly appearing, the headshot system rewards skillful aiming at a, sometimes, moving target. The headshot is a repeatable skill. You're able to strategize around it just like a high crit chance character build in an RPG, and there's still a touch of random chance that you'll land a lucky shot or two. Sometimes things line up just right. Gears of War ties a version of critical hits to a unique shooter genre mechanic with its active reload system. It's a skill-based critical that you can trigger by timing a reload just right, but it's a little risky. If you succeed, you finish the job faster, and you get extra ammo. If you miss the window, the reload takes longer than if you didn't try to active reload at all. No, the system doesn't make much logical sense, but don't let that get in the way of your creativity. Patch over the mystery with some fun lore. What the system provides the game's overall mechanics is what's most important. In action games with a more melee focus, the critical hit concept works with character positioning. Think about combat in Dark Souls, 
or even the spy class in Team Fortress 2. If you can manage to sneak behind a character and stab them in the back, you'll be handsomely rewarded. It's operating on the same satisfactions as the headshot does. Skillful, repeatable, rewarded, and maybe a little luck mixed in. Actually, if you remove that random chance element, the critical hit concept can work decently in fighting games. You can't do headshots, unless we're talking dive kick, but you can adapt the idea into things like the sweet spot mechanic. Smash Bros uses it for Marth. The tip of Marth's sword acts as a guaranteed critical hit, dealing more damage than the rest of it, and knocking characters further back. The mechanical idea is integrated into other characters too, like Captain Falcon's Knee of Justice. Sweet spot mechanics play on rewarding smart positioning in the same vein as backstab mechanics, just in a different context. Okay, so we've gone over why the trigger is adaptable, covering random chance, periodic, and skill-based ways to cause a critical hit, but that's only half of the equation. The second half of a critical hit system, the bonus, is even more adaptable. In most of the examples so far, the bonus has been a big increase in damage. You get exactly what you're trying to do already, just more of it. But there's no reason you couldn't get creative with it. The bonus for a successful critical hit could be almost anything positive. First up, Pokemon. Some moves are structurally a self-contained critical hit system, but with a twist. Moves like Sheer Cold or Fissure are one-hit KO moves, where you have a roughly 30% chance of hitting, with some extra caveats that I don't want to go over. There's a lot. But when that random roll falls your way, it's an instant knockout. The trigger is the same as any other random chance critical hit, and in return for the devastating critical success, you do have to give up your chance to do basic damage. A bigger reward demands a bigger risk. Status effects are another great thing to mix in to reward critical hits. Pokemon also has several moves that have a second roll that may apply extra status effects if they succeed, separate from the normal extra damage critical hit system. The critical hit in these cases isn't just more of the attack you are going for, and they're not guaranteed to happen, but they're all a chance for a welcome bonus in your favor. The amount of damage you can do on a critical is a tricky thing to balance too, especially if the critical system is being used by players and computer opponents. Too little of a critical bonus is uninteresting, but too much can completely overwhelm the rest of the strategic texture of the system. Dungeons & Dragons didn't add a critical hit system to their game for two decades after Empire of the Petal Throne, for exactly this reason. Fire Emblem for a very long time had a nasty combination of permadeath and random critical hits with extremely high damage relative to character HP. Fire Emblem critical hits were a looming force ready to end you at random, and they weren't something you could always easily plan your way around. You must be able to absorb a bad roll or two, or else the system might feel too unpredictable. Predictability is boring, unpredictability is frustrating, and both are unfun. Successful critical systems land somewhere between the two extremes, and the borders for the fun zone are fuzzy and will depend on the game you're making. Playtesting will likely help discover if you've gone too far in either direction, but it's a thing every game with a critical hit system should watch out for. You can also tie in the bonus you get with other custom systems you might not find in other games. A critical hit in Darkest Dungeon not only gives a 150% damage boost and increases the chance and effectiveness of status effects that apply on attack, but also plays into the game's stress meter. Critical hits will raise or lower your stress levels depending on who lands the crit. Even the characters that aren't involved might have their stress levels change from just watching the crit happen. Stress is an accumulated stat, and crossing over stress limits may permanently change a character in different and impactful ways with either negative afflictions or beneficial virtues. A really bad round of combat can alter your character's basic identity for the rest of the game. You can also try to reward critical hits for their own sake, like, say, an extra bonus for hitting the target with multiple criticals. You'd have something like the break system in Octopath Traveler. If you hit an enemy with enough attacks of types that they're weak to, the enemy will break and have to skip their next turn, which is a pretty severe punishment in a turn-based RPG. It's key that the system works by using weaknesses and not random criticals though. It's far easier to strategize around the rate of controlled skill-based criticals than it would be to wait for the fifth random critical to happen and then strike. It's a different twist on the system, a little skill-based, a little periodic, and the reward is tied to the unique mechanics of the turn-based RPG genre. Speaking of mechanics, 
Why make crits an offense-only thing? The systems that govern crits can just as easily apply to defense. Plenty of RPGs give a random chance that a character will dodge or block an attack. The factors that govern the system might change to ones called evasion, accuracy, or the like, but the end result is still a random chance trigger and a welcome bonus if it happens. Skill-based defensive criticals might be even more popular in RPGs than their offensive counterparts. In Paper Mario, most attacks have a window of time for you to hit a button and trigger a critical defense, which will reduce your damage. The Thousand Year Door even adds the Super Guard, which eliminates damage entirely and starts a counterattack. The window is much tighter, but the payoff is much bigger. If you bend the definition of a bonus a little, you can get even more interesting systems. Instead of all positive all the time, maybe we mix in some negative consequences with your crits. Monster Hunter has used this idea for a long time. Each weapon has an affinity stat, which is basically your crit chance. You can change your affinity with several equipable skills, which might increase your chance of a critical hit if you reach certain conditions during a fight. Nothing too crazy yet. However, some weapons have negative affinity. That might sound like you have a lower likelihood of success, but actually, it creates a chance that you'll hit the monster weakly. If you get unlucky, you will lose a quarter of the damage you would have dealt out. Most of the weapons that use this system have a deceptively high base damage stat, or other nice bonuses. But the chance of a negative critical is something you have to keep in mind. The game lets you work around negative affinity with the right equipment skills though. There has even been a bitter critical in some games, which turns 1 in 4 negative crits into a super crit that does double damage. It's a hit so bad, it's good again. Sometimes new systems can inspire ideas for systems within systems. I think for now that's enough. Hopefully this opens your eyes to the enormous range of things that critical hits can use. Head down to the comments for more examples of unique critical systems and leave your own. With just a touch of creativity, you can turn a battle system into a critical success. That was a low-hanging fruit.